Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 130. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, if you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, when we sit down on our couch for Keto on the Couch, we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. What is on your shirt? I got this at BJ's. It was six bucks. I need a six month vacation twice a year. Isn't that not true? That is hilarious. It's, I loved it. If that it was, was available, $6. like you would totally do that, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just live on vacation. You know, speaking of living on vacation, I'm still amazed. We just said this is episode 130. And I know I've said it before, but we're always saying that we're consistently inconsistent. And the fact that we've not Done missed it. one of these. High five. High five on that one. We you can can't ever say no on high five, right? We, I, There have been lots of times where I'm like, there's no keto on the couch this week. And Rachel will be like, we can't do that. Or you'll say, no keto on the couch and this week. And you'll say, we said we would. We, we, it's the one video we refuse you, to miss. He pulls out that, are you going to be a woman of integrity? And I'm like, <laughs> getting, getting dressed. <laughs> I'm excited for this week's Keto on the Couch. Now, um, it is Saturday when we're filming it. Uh, yeah. Rachel's headed out to hang out with Sarah, Anthony's girlfriend, for a little while. So excited. I have four football games. We're going to have some good dinner. We've had some great dinners the last few days with some of our vlogs. We have had some amazing food this week. And I just want to say one more thing before we move on from meeting up with Sarah. I have found that when you're meeting up with friends on keto, mm -hmm. one thing that's very easy for me to do is meet up for breakfast. Sometimes we try to force the, the dinner option, and, and I find that I can always find something on a breakfast menu. Yes. You have eggs, and you have bacon, and you have sausage, and there's just lots of variety. So I just kind of advise, if you're thinking, how do I start going out with my friends that mm -hmm. I used to go to, you know, Mexican food. I mean, you can find something at every right. restaurant. If it's just to get together. But if it's just to get together, like coffee and breakfast food is, is easy. Another suggestion, actually, even before I get to that suggestion, I do want to remind people though, if you're going out for breakfast and you're gonna get eggs, don't get scrambled. I suggest getting fried eggs. Yeah. If you only like scrambled eggs or only like omelets, tell the waiter that, hey, listen, I have a dietary restriction. I cannot have any wheat. I cannot have any flour because a lot of restaurants, especially like diners, like IHOP and yeah, stuff like that, Denise. they will actually use like a pancake batter or a waffle mix in their scrambled eggs and their omelets to make them fluffier. They're gorgeous. But we don't want that stuff. No. So you gotta tell them like, hey, listen, I can't have flour or anything like that and so i want my eggs scrambled but i need them scrambled out of fresh eggs only right and they will usually make yeah, that accommodation but course. don't just go into like ihop and order an omelet because you're gonna be eating a ton of carbs without even knowing it well and it's funny because if you do that and then your friend that maybe is not keto did not make that you know, request. Mm -hmm. When you see the two plates come to the table, you really notice the difference because right. one looks like Goliath. Right. And then one looks like a normal egg that you cook at home. It's like when we used to do fast food years ago, you'd go to McDonald's and, and always made a like, hey, I need this. Like I need extra pickles because then you get a fresh one, right? right? There's, there's a huge difference. But what I was going to say, another great place now that some of these things have kind of opened back up, if you're just going out for a quick bite to eat, like maybe a business lunch, yeah. great place to go is Whole Foods. Yes. Because they have that whole open Dining bar area. and there is a lot of stuff in there that is keto friendly. Well, so it's it, another great place to go. Yeah. And it's not cheap. It's not exp not cheap. It's not that expensive. It's not whole paycheck. Yeah. It's reasonable and you're you know, you're buying things by the pound. Right. So and then they can get what they like and you can get what you like. Yeah. And it's it's fun. So I am drinking a zip fizz because uh, I've got games today. 
I do have some daily minerals in here, which I wanted to address because we said last cup. week, you have your birthday cup? Yep, because it's birthday all month. So last week uh, we mentioned that I found a great way to hide the daily minerals because the daily minerals are a little bitter because there are a lot of minerals. Yeah. And uh, I said to put them in if you're drinking Zip Fizz. And uh, somebody did say like, uh, didn't no. Didn't work for me. Didn't work. I wouldn't advise putting an entire tablespoon in here. Like just just a nice little squirt. Get yourself going. I never do an entire serving of the daily minerals in one sitting. It's throughout the day. Yeah. Like putting it on our steak, putting a little bit in here. Uh just I I personally I can't take it straight. It's just a little bit too strong it's for a, me. It's a rough taste. So Rachel's drinking coffee from today's sponsor. I'm so excited. We have a new sponsor. Uh, today's sponsor is Golden Ratio, and uh, Golden Ratio makes this really delicious coffee, and it's kind of cool with this coffee because it's not, like, brewed. You're not going to uh, go and, you know, have to grind up your beans and everything. They're like tea bags, which is really cool. What makes these really interesting is it's got a lot less acid. Uh, you're going to be able to get all the caffeine. It's very smooth. And also, it doesn't stain your teeth. That is very appealing to me. I, I'm I'm very conscious of my lower teeth because I do. I get, I've had a coffee stain because, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what happens when you drink as much coffee as I do. It's, right. And I used, you know, good toothpaste, but I still have like a couple of areas. So I'm very excited about this. I love the fact that I can just put it into my my coffee mug, uh, you know, the travel mugs. And then by the time I get to work, it's done. And I didn't have to make an entire pot when right. all I needed was a cup. Now, Anthony actually really likes this. We got in one of our keto boxes at one point and he really likes this because it's like a cross between tea and coffee. Right. So you get that nice punch that you like with coffee. It's got a nice flavor like coffee, but it's not that super strong bitter taste. Yeah. So you can really drink this without adding anything to it. Now they actually have a few flavors. They have one called golden milk. And then this box here has a chai spiced original gold and then also vanilla coconut. And that's what I'm drinking this morning. And what's really cool is they come in these little pouches and you can just take this pouch, throw it in your purse, throw it in your briefcase. So wherever you go, you can always grab a cup of coffee. I always need coffee on the ready. Like you always all I need, need is hot water. And this has got like a real creaminess to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get back to my roots, which mm -hmm. is a lot more black coffee than putting a bunch of stuff in it. And so this has a good flavor without any sugar or, or anything. So I taste the coconut, but you also taste like that vanilla cream. And we have it kind of as a joke because this co it says, I like it on the dark side, but this is a very lighter yeah, it coffee. It looks like tea. Uh, so the way you do this is you're just gonna dip it in there. You, you, they say actually steep it in there for yep. about five to 10 minutes and then you take the bag out. But of course, Rachel, she just it. wants to leave the bag in there. now. For the sponsorship of this video, they gave you guys a special discount because we did tell them like, hey, listen, like we need a discount for right. people. So if you use the link down below, uh, you're going to get 15% off of your purchase when you go to their website. So just use the link down below. If you happen to go to their website without using that link, use the coupon code 2 Crazy Ketos. But the easiest way to do it, the way to make sure that they know that you found them through 2 Crazy Ketos is by using the link down below. And we greatly appreciate you guys for supporting the sponsors who support 2 Crazy Ketos. Thank you. So we do have one other little bit of thing that we need to do. I'm gonna let you look at this real quick and talk about that while I set this up over here. We were really excited to find Maria Emmerich's book and get it. We grabbed it on Amazon mm -hmm. this week and we were so happy that We've we did. We've been cooking from it. We have been cooking all kinds of stuff. In fact, last night you had meatball, meatball subs. subs. I actually got some too. Delicious. I felt like I was eating a meatball sub. As, as a I matter of fact, Caleb looked at me and he was like, are, what are, are you, doing? you really eating a meatball sub? I'm like, it's delicious. And yeah, some people do have a problem with her protein sparing bread because it can be a little chewy. But when you start putting sauce on there and stuff, yes. it is delicious. It is the perfect conveyance because it holds its own mm -hmm. against the sauce. I put some sauce, a little bit of mozzarella cheese on there. 
I took the meatballs, I sliced them in half, and I mean, it reminded me of the good old days, or, or right. the bad old days. The bad really. old days, but like that taste was good. So I'm gonna leave a link for this book down below. It's not sponsored or anything, but the no. reason I have the book is because Maria Emmerich was giving one away, and uh, we did have the giveaway, and uh, unfortunately we haven't heard from the winner. So, so we're going, it's we're too gonna, good not we're, to we're give gonna away. Give a, we're gonna pick another winner right now. So let's go on over to pick a winner. Pick a winner. And I've already got the URL and we're gonna go fetch. Anything, Anything goes. goes. And the winner is, oh, I have to hit pick a winner. Rochelle, Rochelle Allen. Allen said, I love the interview. It was awesome. Well, thanks so much, Rochelle. So Rochelle, here's what you need to do. You need to send us an email at joe at twocrazyketos.com with all of your shipping information. Make sure you put your email address in there. We will send that off to Maria Emmerich and she will send you a book directly from her. And again, guys, this book is great. Whether you have children, you have grandchildren, or you it's just, just you. like fun finger foods. Literally, you cannot open this book without finding something. Pad Thai. Protein noodle pad thai, chicken protein noodle soup, sweet and sour jerky. I mean, just like blueberry cheesecake muffins for breakfast. I mean, she has such a wide I mean, variety of stuff. You can't Beautiful open pictures. it without holiday jigglers. She's got gummies in here, protein hot chocolate, raspberry sorbet, sandwich on a stick. I mean, you pizza rolls. Every page, you're gonna be like, I wanna make that. Everything I wanna you make want that. to eat. Again, she's not sponsored. We don't make any money. This we book. just love it. I'm just in love with this book because they're my favorite kind of foods. Well, and I think it will really help for the holidays. Yeah. You're looking for, you know, when it's not just the staples of the holiday season, but you're always looking for fun food right. to introduce to your family or to bring to the potluck or the party and be like, look what I made, and right. this is super fun. We've been doing a lot of vlogging lately. Hopefully you guys like those vlogs. If you don't so. like them, let us know down in the comments you section. You stink. But yeah, if you think we stink, just tell us. Yeah. We're okay. It's all right. You Do don't stink, stink though. Thanks. No. You, I did just shower. You did shower. Okay. One thing I wanted to mention before we get into the comments and subscriber of the weeks. Last week, I made a little boo-boo. My fault, all on me. Sometimes I prepare keto on the couch in the middle of the night, and I slip up. So the way we pull over comments, the way we pull over, you know, like people's stories, it all comes from cutting and pasting off of Facebook. And somehow I posted somebody's story, it was the very last story, and I Wrong forgot name. to change the name. Yeah. And it was Because what I did was I take last week's template and I just move everything over. And I forgot to change the name. We did edit it out yeah. after the premiere. Because we don't want to steal somebody's story. We don't want to steal someone's story, but we do want to apologize for that. And just please, please, please don't let that not share your, have you not share your story. Yeah. And it's really, really important to share your story because it really does help motivate people. It really makes people feel like they're part of the family and they are not alone. So it's really, really important to share your well, story. Well, and in the Facebook family group as well, because even if we don't pull your story and use it on Keto on the Couch, mm -hmm. you I mean, everybody is reading that and it may speak to exactly what they're going through. That's right. So let's get started off. We're going to take a quick commercial break and then we will come back with our subscriber of the weeks and our keto college adjunct professor of the week and then all of the comments let's get this week started okay so we're going to start off with the keto college adjunct professor of the week now if you're new to our channel try not to lose my shirt keto on the couch is all about subscribers that's why we started this even though technically we're not on a couch even when we started it, we were really on a couch. We were on a sofa, right? We were that, on a that's a, that's a whole Chris Bear thing. Anyway, it's all about you guys. And we ask you to please share your stories. Please inspire other people because that's why this is such a family atmosphere. We're going to start off with Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week where we go and find some comment that was in our Facebook family group, which there's a link for down below. Please go join that. 
and it's something that inspires people, something that we found very inspirational. And this week's is from Shanti. Hey, Shanti. And uh, she said, some days can be harder than others to make good decisions. This quote reminds me that Rome wasn't built in a day and what I do today will influence how I feel tomorrow. One step at a time, I will get there. And the quote says, ask yourself if what you are doing today is getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow. Wow, that is so good. That is a very powerful reminder because whenever I am going off plan, it's because I'm having like a YOLO moment. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, live for right this second, like right. not even, and I like being present in the moment as far as relationships go, that right. you're like, okay, I'm, I'm turning off all the electronic devices and we're having a good conversation together. Mm -hmm. But as far as my eating plan, I don't want to live like there's no tomorrow with my eating. Right. Because I can really screw up my future plans in the rest of my week and really make myself upset. So yeah, keep in mind, am I what I'm doing right now gonna propel my goals later in the week and in the month? Right. It reminds me a lot of like our interview with Kim Howerton, which if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link for She's over so Rachel's fun. head. And she talked about that. Like we can't expect different results if we're going to do what we used to do. I yeah. mean, what is that saying? Like the definition of insanity is trying of doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. It's not going to happen. It just doesn't work that you way. You got to right? change. It's not going to change. So we do have now a subscriber of the week. And again, we're asking you, please go share your story, whether this is day one of your keto journey, you're a week in, you're a month in, you're a year in, or you're 10 years in, share your story. Cause I know you're thinking like, oh, nobody cares. But there is somebody out there right now who is going through either what you went through or what you're currently going through. And when yeah. you share your story, you're gonna be the reason that they keep going. That's right. I mean, think about that. It's like, you're, you're never going to know. And you know, I look at teachers. Teachers are awesome but they a lot of times don't see what the result of their teaching is. Exactly, I mean, you think about your famous writers in history, but there was a teacher that that taught them to read mm -hmm. and, and maybe they're not gonna get a shout out. You know, right. you're not gonna see on this side of glory, you know, the influence that you had on other people, but you do have a very powerful influence. Yeah, Come, think about a foundation of a house, right? And the inside, the studs, nobody sees the foundation. Nobody sees the studs, but if those studs aren't put up right, if the foundation was laid wrong, eventually the windows break, the doors creak, yeah. things shift. So when you put up your story, you're laying a foundation for other people. So please, please, please share your story. Okay, so the first one that we have for our subscriber of the week is actually from one of our friends, it is from Barb. Barb. Newton. And uh, Barb said, I've only posted in this group a few times, but the Lord is leading me to share new updates to my story as Joe and Rachel encourage, encourage us to do. Thanks, Barb. In hopes that our story will resonate and relate to someone else's journey. I pray that no one else can and apologize up front as this will be a long post. I will attempt to be as concise as possible. She's so awesome. COVID is no joke and no respecter of persons. Since being on keto for the last two years, I've experienced healing from severe depression and anxiety, GERD, lessened pain from fibromyalgia and arthritis through my spine, and have not even as much as had a cold in two and a half years. Amazing. I contracted COVID and COVID pneumonia, and I spent 17 days in the ICU fighting for every breath. Another six days on telemetry, total of 23 days hospitalized. It is only by God's grace and mercy that I am here and beginning my recovery journey, which will long, which will long unless God intervenes. I have major muscle loss due to atrophy from not being mobile for 21 days. And uh, when I started keto, I said I was never going off. My initial purpose was weight loss. I know better than to say never. Whether by your choice or not, if you are on the, off the keto wagon, it is okay. Yeah. Get up and get back. This is your journey. No two look the same. I will eventually get back to ketovore and intermittent fasting, but for now, I'm gonna be doing low carb to heal my body. I'm doing barb, barb keto. keto. Keto on your personal journey to KK family. I love you so much, Barb. Yeah, that was, it was just such a scary journey. We we became friends from church is how, how we met Barb and her family. And 
I mean, it was just such a scary time. She was in the hospital for so long and, you know, she didn't have the option of what she ate when she was in the okay. hospital. And so she was like, man, I am having to eat just like garbage, instant mashed potatoes. I'm really angry about this. And there was no food that was able to be brought in. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was frustrating to her. And it was like, don't worry. There's nothing that you can do right now. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, when you get home, you'll you'll get back yep. on, on the wagon. Not like she voluntarily jumped off the wagon, you yes. know. So um, it's just amazing to, for her to just be home. So we are just so thankful and grateful for that. And yeah, it's a slow process to get back on as her body is healing. Mm -hmm. But we're just so thankful for Barb. And I love you so much, girl. And I'm excited for other people to read that because sometimes when it's not your fault, yes, it's not your fault. You didn't jump off the keto wagon. You know, you, you fell off because somebody else was driving it, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, there's nothing you can do. Don't worry about it and just get back on when you can. Yeah. Okay, I think we have another one and this one is Linda. Hey, Linda. And Linda said, a friend read my post from last week and told me I left out some very important information. I forgot to mention that I was diagnosed with type two diabetes and put on metformin. Wow. After three months, I was taken off of metformin. So good. Yay. My blood pressure is now in a controllable range and I feel pretty good for an 81 wow. year old woman. I have lost 86 pounds wow. and never want to put this weight back on. So keto is my way of life. How beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that update because again, I think people need to hear it. Mm -hmm. They need to hear I've lost 86 pounds in my 80s. Yes. It is never too late. I posted a picture this week of what I looked like at 35 and what I look like at 45. Yeah. I'm you not, don't look like the same person. I'm not getting worse. I'm getting better. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It's never too late to start. Can I say like, and again, we mentioned it during our live stream, you're looking younger. And we talked about like during that interview where Rachel was interviewing Kim Howerton, they're two weeks apart in age and neither one of them look 45. You literally, both of you look 35. Well, and she's like me, we feel great. Mm -hmm. I mean- And that's the most important thing. Regardless of how we look, I mean, you know, taste is subjective and looks is subjective, right? Somebody may be like, I, I mean, we've gotten emails where people are like, I don't like Rachel's face and there's nothing I can do with it, you know? Right. <laughs> but we feel better. So what's going on on the inside is making our everyday life so much more enjoyable. I'm really yeah. thankful for that. Yep. Let's get on to the comments. We're gonna start off with the YouTube comments. The first one is from Zoe. Zoe, she said, it's so disheartening to see blankety blank, like this. I really dislike that these huge corporations re-engineer products like this without putting any consideration or thought into it. For them, it's all about the almighty dollar. Well, I've got news for them. For me, it's all about my health and I can vote with mm. my dollars. That is a very powerful sentence. I can vote with my dollars. Right. Thanks for the brutally honest review. Okay, so obviously this comment isn't from last week's Keto on the Couch, but we felt it was such a good comment. Really? We really wanted to put it in here. And if you didn't see it, it is actually from our review of the Reese's Zero Sugar Miniature Peanut Butter Cups. I will yeah. leave a link for that over Rachel's head. And yeah, we found those and it was so disgusting. It was so disappointing. We urge you not to buy that garbage. There are so many other options out there, but Zoe said it best. Yeah. I can vote with my dollars. And that's what these companies need to know. If you wanna keep giving us garbage, we just won't buy it anymore. And I think about that, when you know better, you do better. I mean, and I look back when we were raising our children and we were giving them boxes of Lucky Charms, not knowing we should have just given them a donut because right. there's actually less sugar in the donut, yeah. right? But you don't know. You don't know. So. This is a very important reminder. I am really glad that we actually came in contact with these mm -hmm. and we can do a video on them because as we go into the holiday season, commercials you see, you're gonna start seeing pictures from different companies like this that, that they're gonna play on your nostalgia. They're going to have, you know, their candy bar like 
put this out for Santa instead of, you know, cookies because he's going to like this product better. Don't you remember how much you loved this or that? So let's remember they're a corporation. They're trying to make money. Don't give into this nostalgia and vote with your dollars because right. if no one buys the product, they will stop making it. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of when I was growing up. So I grew up, which I'm sure a lot of you guys did as well, in the low fat movement. Right. The time where they're like, fat is bad. So all of a sudden you had products like snack wells. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. You know what happens when you eliminate fat? Tasteless. You eliminate flavor and they knew that. So what did they do? They upped the sugar. A lot of times the calories are the same. And then you look at the fat and you're like, oh yeah, lower fat, why not? Right. Well, why are the calories the same? Because now go down and look at the sugar. A lot of times it's a lot, almost double sometimes of the sugar. And guess what? My personal belief, that's why we're all here right now. Because they told us stop eating fat, but since we can't give you fat in we'll your give, snacks, we'll we're you, gonna give you more sugar. We'll give you sweet, flavor mm -hmm. to replace the fat. Yeah, so marketing is the thing. Let's vote with our dollars. Next one is from Venerable. Hey Venerable, they say my local Kroger sells jalapenos pre-sliced for poppers. It takes 90% of the workout for making keto poppers. Pre-cut jalapenos also go bad faster, so I gotta eat them, them all quickly. Okay, Venerable. This could be dangerous for us. Uh, Thanks for sharing that because yeah, that would be really bad for me if I can find them because it's the biggest reason that I don't make jalapenos is because I got to scoop them out. Easier? Good news though. Yeah. We don't have Kroger's. Right. <laughs> okay. And I don't think we've ever said that because I am always like moaning and groaning that we don't have certain grocery stores and Kroger's on that list. I'm yes. like, man, why don't we have Kroger? What was the other one? Like the God discount warehouse, grocery warehouse. God or can't like that. trust us with Kroger because they've got pre-cut jalapenos there. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Bitsy. Hey, Bitsy. Bitsy said, I understand the importance of electrolytes like sodium, magnesium, and potassium, but how do the minerals you mentioned factor into great the equation? Great question. Great question. And you actually had a great answer, but well, I really feel like a lot of people need to hear this. There's more than just the potassium and the magnesium and the sodium that we need. There are a lot of other minerals that we need. We need like chloride and stuff. We need iron. We need to get some iodine in there. And that is one of the reasons that Dr. Barry actually went to Keto Chow and said, hey, can we do something here? Because I'm tired of taking all of these supplements. I'm having right. to go and source everything out. So I want one product that I can add to my food and I'm going to get everything. Also, here's the problem. Again, we gotta remember, a lot of companies don't care about our health. They just wanna make money. So you have a lot of vitamin and mineral companies that are putting products out there and literally your body can't even use them. You're buying these things of magnesium and these things of calcium and you're eating them and you're spending all this money and your body doesn't absorb any of them. So right. that's one of the reasons, or one of the main reason that Dr. Barry really asked Keto Chow to develop it. And it is a great product, but if you're doing that, you really are eliminating having to take all those different pills and things like that. And the good pills, because even when you're getting the supplements, when he was taking supplements himself and eating all the pills, he wasn't getting them from Dollar Tree. Right. You know, like I was sometimes right. where I'm like, okay, calcium is calcium is calcium. No, and if it's not bioavailable, mm -hmm. there's just no point to it. And you do get some of these vitamins and minerals in the food you eat, in your meat. But the problem is, is that the farmland that we're like getting all of our vegetables from or that our you know cows and stuff are grazing on it's minerally depleted yeah. because we keep going to the same land and that's why when you look at like regenerative farms where they're bringing the animals on and then they grow vegetables and then they move over to a different section but a lot of the stuff we're getting in the grocery store it's not farmed that way. Yeah. So we we kind of need to replace some of those minerals on our own. It kind of hurts your heart that that's revolutionary now, regenerative right. farming, because that was just farming. That was farming before. for a long time. <laughs> 
Uh, next one is from Michelle. Hey, Michelle. She says, do the mineral drops upset your stomach at all? My husband needs them and takes them regularly, but finds he needs to spread them out to keep his stomach from hurting. So with the mineral drops from Dr. Barry, number one, do not take them on an empty stomach. Make sure you're taking yeah. something with them. Um, and yes, uh, they can. It's not that they're tearing up your stomach. It's just it's minerals. It's a lot of sodium. Uh, so the best thing to do is, yes, yeah, split it up throughout the day. And also the way we're doing it for the most part, I put it in my zip fizz just to start my day off, but then I'll put it on my food because it pretty much becomes salting your food and you don't salty. taste it. You don't taste any of the other nasty flavors. Yeah. It's like, I know it's there and working, but like, I don't have to drink it. <laughs> Uh, next one is from Fieber. Hey, Fieber. Fieber said, I have used the Keto Chow electrolytes for a few months. Do I need the minerals too? I have read the info on the Keto Chow website, but I still don't know if I need both. We recommend them. Uh, so what I recommend, and I think this is what Keto Chow recommends as well, is use the daily minerals. Like that should be your base because that's a good start. The daily minerals are going to have electrolytes in there. And then if you need more electrolytes, like for example, I'm gonna go out and be on a field for eight hours today, I'm gonna need electrolytes. So if you're working out, if maybe you're doing a little extra sweating, if you're finding, hey, I'm having some cramps, that's where you're gonna add in the electrolyte drops or in the magnesium drops to kind of keep you going to add to the mineral drops. But if you're gonna get one, Right. My suggestion is the daily mineral drops. Because I am going to go and sit down in a diner. So mm. I probably don't need as many electrolytes today right. as Joe does. Yeah, but you're going to get more stuff out of the daily minerals than you will out of the electrolytes. I think they're both great products, but if you're only getting one, I recommend the daily minerals. Next one is from Steve. Hey, Steve T. Uh, Non-scale victory went to a German sausage house last week. Unfortunately, the buffet was still closed due to COVID, so I went with the sampler to be able to try all the meats. As the waiter began walking away, he said, oh, and for two more dollars, you can make it all you can eat meats, no okay. sides, which I didn't touch anyway. Easiest decision ever. Yes. Long story longer, as I am approaching double ditched plates, the waiter asked, where am I putting it all? There's my non-scale victory. A hundred pounds ago, nobody asked where I was putting it all as it was fairly obvious. That is truth. And I can remember, so, but when I was fat, I never wanted to, this is why I eat at home. I never wanted it to go out to eat. started because of this. I never wanted to go out to eat. Rachel would be like, let's go out to eat. And I'm like, no. People are looking at we me. We will go out, let's get the food and take it home and eat at home. Yeah. Why? Cause I almost weighed 300 pounds and I didn't want anybody, even if I wasn't eating a big amount of food, which I never did. Even when I was 300 pounds, I didn't I did. eat plates and plates of food. I ate constantly throughout the day and I ate lots of carbohydrates, but I couldn't finish 15 wings back then either. But my whole thing was everybody is staring at me. Everybody is staring at me. So I never wanted to eat in a restaurant. I wanted to bring it home. I never wanted to go grocery shopping I, during the day. I would go. We would I'd go, go at midnight. At very late at night, especially like at Walmart and stuff, because they would have 24 hours at that time. Because, yeah, I don't want somebody like looking at me, looking at my buggy that look back at me when you're checking out. I, I didn't like even the interaction with cashiers. I mean, when we first saw like check it out yourself stuff, when it was mm. just starting, we were so thankful for it because I don't I don't want you looking at me. Yeah. So and I, I can always remember. Yeah. Nobody said anything to you, but it was in your mind. Yeah. Like people are judging you. Funny thing is now. People judge us all the time and say something about it. Which is why. You're, why are you eating such a big steak? Why are there so many eggs in your basket? You're going to die from eating too much butter. Thanks, You stranger. didn't say a word when I weighed 300 pounds. But the look was there, and, and I think that is, that's so wonderful. So you just got to have so much fun enjoying a beautiful variety. Joe is super jealous because German sausage. I'm German. Is like, he, he's he's all about, and I love it too. And getting to taste a variety of food, that's really exciting. And yeah. October. Oktoberfest is on its way. That's right. So look in your local area and see, are they having some sort of Oktoberfest celebration? Oh, we got to come up with a keto version 
of Hassenpfeffer. Oh, those poor little rabbits. Uh, next one's from Jean. Hey, Jean. Jean said, I completely agree with your comment about maintenance mode. I lost 106 pounds on keto ending on 2012. Wow. I went from 306 down to 200. However, I felt it was time to go into maintenance mode because at six foot four, I felt I was a bit too lean. Well, it's now 2021 and I'm back up to 260. I'm back on the keto wagon and while it's a journey, but the motivation of these videos has really wow. helped. Thank you so much. I'm going to try and make it to the Vegas keto Yay. event. Can you let me know the link I can use to register? I, I will did. leave that link down below uh, for anybody. So if anybody doesn't know, we are going to go to the Las Vegas keto event. Uh, which is happening in mid-October. Again, link will be down below. Uh, we hope to see everybody there. I know Chris from Keto Chow is going to be there. My buddy Steve from Keto Chow is going to be there. Uh, so, you know, we will probably spend most of our time, for those of you who don't know, what we like to do is we don't organize meetups outside of the event because we're afraid we're going to miss somebody. miss somebody. So what we do is we spend most of the event uh, either walking around and interviewing people, which we try to do while speakers are talking so that you guys can go see that and then we can go interview other people. But when we're not there, we're generally hanging out in front of either the Keto Chow booth or the Redmond Real Salt booth. This yep. way you guys can come find us. Come, come see us and let's yeah. talk. So come see us. But I love that you shared that, Gene. Thank you so much for that comment because sometimes, you know, people get very mad when we say something like that about There's no such thing as maintenance. Mode, um, because they're like, well, I've maintained for a really long time and how dare you say that? Like that's, you know, reckless advice. I, I that they always lead with like, you're so reckless. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm like, goodness, I, I feel like I'm driving this, you know, keto channel fast towards something dangerous. But, um, but the, the reality is not everybody has that experience. Right. If, if you're able to maintain the identical weight for years and years, like that, without even ever thinking about it or planning, like, wow, that is awesome right. and bravo for right. that. But that has not been our experience and sometimes other people have had that experience. And when I say there's no such thing as maintenance, I'm not saying you can't maintain your weight. I'm saying there's no such thing as a maintenance mode. It's dangerous to put your mind there because then you think I can relax. Yeah, cruise control. And, and like Kim Hallerton was talking about, we should have these times where we're not in a diet, which I completely agree. I still think we have to think because if my idea of maintenance would be, I'm gonna maintain my weight, but eat whatever I want. Yeah. Well, I may feel like garbage. And then the next thing I know, weight kind of starts gaining back on. Well, and she talked about, and I thought this was a really great way to look at it. Like there's times that you are working to, to tweak your body composition. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some areas where I want to firm up? And that's, I mean, that's not just your diet, but you're also, you know, examining your, your mobility and your exercise level. And like, how do I feel? Let's reassess. Is there something going on in my body that I, that I want to tweak. And then there's some times when, you know, you're, you're like, okay, I'm where I'm at. And so we, we'll just, you know, we're not thinking so hard about it and like obsessing about macros or anything like that. Yeah. So next one is from Zoe. Hey Zoe. Zoe said, I'm a firm believer that our bodies tell us what we need in cycles within reason. That's good. Right now, my go-to food is beef and hamburger, especially right now because bacon and eggs sound gross to me oh. temporarily. My birthday meal this year is going to be prime rib with horseradish and au jus Yum. for sure. Love you guys. Thanks for the reminder to give ourselves grace and happy early birthday, Rachel. Hope it's fabulous. Thanks so much, Zoe. You you helped to make my birthday fabulous. Everybody that wished me well, I really appreciate you taking the time to just let me know you're thinking about me on that day. And um, I just want to remind everybody that our challenge for September is to live every day like yes. it's your birthday because you're very intentional on your birthday. You make time for friends. A lot of times we only make time or we we manage to find time to deal with like problems. Like we carved out time in our morning to take Anthony's, you know, broken car to the mechanic. Like mm -hmm. we made time to do that. But we don't make time to go and enjoy a sunrise like we do on our birthday. We don't make time to hang out with friends and you know, we don't take time to give ourselves grace right. and really say, Hey, I'm really glad that you're alive, Rachel. You're, you know, you're looking good. 45 looks good on you, Rachel. We don't, we're not nice to ourselves every day. Like we are on our birthday. And this is a great month to remind ourselves to just live like it's our birthday. Yeah. 
Uh, let's take a quick commercial break and come back with our Facebook comments. I wanted to talk one second about um, the daily recipe challenge that's on our website. And that all comes down to you guys. You guys are being asked to share what are some birthday worthy recipes yes. that, that maybe we could use in a future vlog. So if you would share those on at Rachel at two crazy ketos.com, we'll take a look at those recipes. And if we use them in an upcoming vlog, we will give you full credit. Yeah. We actually had one in the vlog that's coming out today when we're filming this yeah. came from Zoe it did was a stuffed chicken breast. Oh my gosh. So we modified good. it a little bit. But wow, like if you want a high protein that you got to go check out, the, leave a video for it. Just go check it out. You come up with cool recipes, but you come up with cool recipes yeah. and we don't want to miss them. Let's get into the comments. First one is from Julie. Hey, Julie. Julie said, I feel a bit silly asking this, but I think some people here will understand. How do I know when I am comfortably full? What does it feel like for you? This is such a great question. It is. You know why? Because Rachel didn't know what comfortably full feels like. No, I didn't. You didn't know. And that is why we really started talking about the one-to-one. -one. So people come to us all the time like, oh, one-to-one, -one, you don't have to count calories. We're not counting calories. We're counting grams. Why? Because percentages are stupid. Maria Emmerich talked about why are percentages stupid? Because people say, you should eat 5% carbs to be on a ketogenic lifestyle. Figure out what 5% of 2000 calories is. It's not like, you know, eating 10 or 15 carbs. No. Bump it up to like Robert eating three to 4,000 calories. 5%, that's a lot of carbohydrates. That is a, a lot. lot of carbohydrates. So we talk about eating grams. Maria Emmerich talks about eating grams. Dr. Barry says, eat all of the beef and bacon and eggs and butter you want until you are comfortably full. Problem is, some people don't know what comfortably full is feels like because we've screwed our bodies up. One to one is very, very similar. So when you look at things like eggs, when you look at things like prime rib, that is one to one. What do we mean by one to one? We talking about it has about equal amounts of protein and fat in it. And that's what makes it so good. So it's the same thing that Dr. Barry is talking about. And when you start eating a one to one, going like, hey, I need to eat 150 grams of protein and up to 150 grams of fat, you start to feel full. And yeah. now you're gonna start learning, oh, that's what feels full because protein is going to help fill you up. Fat will help sustain you. Protein is gonna fill you up. Dr. Cywis actually has a great way of helping you learn to feel full. And he talks, about, I think what's it called, sequential eating where you sit down with a small plate, like say, let's say you're having wings, put eight on your plate and then over there somewhere, we have to reach for put it. another yeah. 20, eat the eight on your plate and then go get a couple more and then go get a couple more. Number one, it slows you down. But number two, a lot of times we think we just need to clean our plate. Yeah. Right. And so we're going to eat till the plate's clean. But then when the plate's clean, you're like, oh, I'm full. Sometimes you don't even need that food. No, you just, you need, there's, there's such a thing as food insecurity mm -hmm. where you're like, I need to know that there's more stuff and, mm -hmm. and you know, it just depends on how you're raised. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's harder for others. If you had, you know, a, a mom or dad or, or relatives that were like, take it away from her. She's, you know, like you need to stop eating that. And that's the way they kind of handled it. Sometimes it can develop some food insecurity where like, I need to know I'm surrounded by food in case I want more. Right. So that's a great way to handle that. I have noticed as we have upped the protein, I hit a protein wall. Mm -hmm. Protein, if you're really getting the protein, I can work in as many carbs as I need. I could eat an entire bag of Doritos, you know, or rice. I could eat a lot of eat mashed more potatoes, than a bag. like carbohydrates. I can eat a lot of that, but you try to eat that loaf of Maria Emmerich's original recipe, protein bread, you just, there is no possible way I was gonna be able to eat a loaf by myself. You just hit a protein wall. In that vlog we did where we have, you know, Zoe's chicken recipe, we opened it up with a challenge from Maria Emmerich where she said, I want you to go make my protein bread. And she's like, you can use the allulose one, but she's like, just use a tablespoon of allulose. Now we didn't use any allulose. The allulose is supposed to make the, the crust softer. 
She said, but turn it into French toast, which we did, and it was delicious. It was so good. What you didn't see in that video was neither one of us could finish a half a loaf. She told us to eat the entire loaf each as a, you know, French toast. And the entire loaf, if I remember right, it was under 900 calories and it was like 150 grams of protein as French toast. Neither one of us could eat a half. I left two pieces and you like took an hour to eat the last piece. It was so hard because I was like, this this is does not look like a formidable plate for Rachel. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm like- But all that protein. I'm like, are, what are you saying that I can't eat this? That seemed very odd to me, but like protein is like, no, you're done. Right. So lead with your protein. Right. Again, I mean, even if you're making a, you know, a plate of stuff, it used to be like, eat your vegetables first, eat your meat first, yeah. eat the protein first, and then move on to your sides. And I'm telling you, you are going to get full faster. Even last night, I had Maria Emmerich's meatball sub. I had two meatballs, yeah. like two meatballs. And then I cut them in half and I put it on, I made like basically a baguette with her recipe. It was one fifth of the loaf of bread. <laughs> I was so stuffed at the end of it, I couldn't eat my pudding. Yeah. I couldn't eat it. it. It's so filling. Yeah. Like crazy filling. Okay, so next one is from Chris. Hey Chris, they say newbie to the page and to keto. Well, welcome. Hello everybody. Does anyone know if the chicken pizza crust can be made in advance, like a couple of hours, and refrigerated to use at dinner time? If so, should I shape and refrigerate or bake and refrigerate? Okay, yes, you absolutely can make the chicken pizza crust ahead of time. I would suggest uh, making it and then freezing it or refrigerating it. When you do it, you don't want to get it like really crispy. Just kind of give it like that initial bake where you would then go and put your toppings on. So don't overcook it. But if you try to make it and then put it in the refrigerator without having done any of the baking, it's just really, really sticky. Yeah. It, it's better off. It's like a regular pizza crust. If you go to the store and you see like pre-made pizza crusts, in the freezer section, they've usually been baked just a little bit, just right. to kind of get it going, but you have to finish off the baking process. Our next one is from Janice. Hey Janice, she says, is allulose and swerve the same thing? Why do some recipes call for both or use swerve and liquid? Great question. This is a great question, and that's why I put it in there, because I see this a lot. So no, swerve and allulose, not the same thing. Let's start off with allulose. Allulose is an alternative sweetener, it actually is made from sugar uh, through a certain process. And what's cool about allulose is it acts very much like sugar. So you can caramelize it, uh, it dissolves. I love allulose. Couple things with allulose. Number one, it can cause gastric distress, but not as bad as a lot of the other sweeteners. Right. It's also known to actually lower glucose, which is really cool. So you can have this, and not only are you not spiking your insulin a whole bunch, but you're actually lowering your glucose. The trouble is, it's only about 70% as sweet as sugar. Right, which is why a lot of times you're going to see people either using allulose and like erythritol or swerve, or using allulose like we do, and then adding in a liquid you know, sweetener like monk fruit or sucralose or uh, even uh, using stevia because what'll happen is you're gonna go one to one because you know, in your recipe, let's say you're making a cake, you don't wanna add too much because then you lose the right consistency. So then you gotta up the sweetness a little bit. And that is why you see a lot of recipes where they have so much allulose. Tons. And if you're a total carb person, it's really gonna send you the other way. I mean, I've seen some keto products with like 35 grams of allulose still, in it. And still not and sweet. And still not sweet. So that's why you'll see a lot of times where people are using, you know, one or uh, two combined. Now, Swerve is actually a brand. And it is actually erythritol, but it's a brand of erythritol. So you don't have to use, you know, Swerve. If you see a recipe called for Swerve, you can find any one of them out there. I think Swerve is best known though for their powdered erythritol. Yeah. Though they have them all. Like confectioner sugar. A lot of times when you see a recipe call for Swerve, they're looking for confectioner. Biggest problem with erythritol is it does cause gastric distress. And for Rachel, the bigger cooling problem effect. is it's got a cooling effect. So it makes your tongue cool. It can cause tingling. It, it just, 
if you don't like mint and menthol, a lot of times, like if there's too much erythritol in there, you instantly feel you it. get that same thing, which is again is why you'll use erythritol and stevia or erythritol and sucralose. Trying to get the balance. Yeah, that's to, right. So you get the the volume you need, and then get the sweetness from somewhere else. Right. Okay. Great question though. Yes. Next one is from James. Hey James. He said, "Okay." Lesser of the evils, pick your battle. I like that. Oil, sugar, or carbs. Wednesday I had lunch with a friend and chose wings naked, the safest option, but fried in soybean oil. Should have asked for before ordering and they only have six instead of 12. How long does it take on average to recover from the inflammation from seed oils? I feel fine today other than allergies. This is a great question. Yeah, it is. We've talked about this before. The worst is sugar. Okay, so if you had to, I'm gonna go from worst to best. The worst thing to add back in is sugar. Avoid the sugar. Avoid okay? the sugar. And I'm not talking about there's less than a gram of sugar where it doesn't even show up as a carb. I'm talking about an Oreo cookie. I'm talking about a dessert. Or that the kind wings of thing. that are just tossed in the like, very sugary, yes. most sugary barbecue sauce that you could find. Then I'd say is the carbs. Like I would rather you eat. 25 carbs in a meal and have some french fries then eat the sugar i'm yep. not saying eat french fries don't no. let's, let's make sure we get the or i one, don't want to see some joe said you can eat french fries right. i am not saying that i'm saying that's better than the sugar a healthy carb like a sweet potato is better than eating sugar yeah then the net the, the best one out of the one the one if i can if i have to eat one of them it's going to be the seed oils but not on a regular basis. Again, I don't want somebody to take me and say, Joe said seed oils are fine. They're not. They're just as bad as carbs. They cause just as many problems as carbs if you're using them on a regular basis. We were in Omaha, guess what? We had chicken salad from Costco, which is made with soybean oil. Right. Do we eat that every day? No. no. But. Once in a while, we may have that. Once in a while, we may go to a ring, wing restaurant that uses bad oil, peanut oil, or soybean oil, or canola oil, but we don't do it on a regular basis. Yeah, so that is just, you're going out, you're not the cook, mm -hmm. you're enjoying the meal, and yeah, I say, you know, the carbs in the seasonings, because we will go for a rub. You don't need to like worry that, okay, well, I can't even enjoy any garlic parmesan wings or something because mm -hmm. they've got garlic on it and garlic's you know more carby than what i'm used to eating that's i, I feel like that's the same flow for me yeah sugar's the worst then the carbs then the oil now as far as how long does it take to recover for depends me it depends on like how much i had but you know like if i eat just a little bit like maybe it was in the dressing Six wings. uh it doesn't really affect me if it's something major, maybe a day. And that's why I say like, that's the least, you know, dangerous of them all. Because if I eat sugar, it's gonna take me a week or two. If I eat some sweet potatoes, you know, which I haven't in four years, but if I you do, did. it's gonna take me a couple of days. Yeah. It, it just, it depends on your body, but on average, you should be back to normal within a day. Uh, next one is from Rachel. Hey, Rachel. She says, been off the wagon for a bit. I've done terrible this year. Mm, Rachel, you're awesome. People say they do this lifestyle for health. I've had it in my mind that I am only morbidly obese. I've had that before. Like, I'm still fine. Keep going. I don't have diabetes or high blood pressure, so I just gave up and went back to eating crap. Last Monday, my knees started hurting and I felt a pop and tear. Got an MRI and nothing is torn, but I have bone on bone arthritis in two spots on the medial side of my knee. Folks, I'm 36 years old. Wow. I'm five foot two though, and have been 200 plus pounds for 15 years. Goes to show that morbid obesity for almost my adult life was still harmful for my health. Now I can't walk around the house without pain. Long story longer, being fat still does bad things to your body. Needless to say, I'm getting back on the keto, low carb lifestyle. So proud of you, Rachel. Yeah, Rachel, I mean, first of all, I am so sorry you're going through that, but I know how you feel. Yeah. I can tell you most of my life when I was fat, especially as an adult, and, I, and I'm talking about like not at the very end, but you know, most of the beginning of our marriage and definitely in my previous marriage, though I was fat, and I mean like 200, between 200, I was always between 240 and 270 pounds till the end where 
I'm pretty sure I was 300 pounds. Yeah. I stopped weighing at 285. Uh, but I didn't have high blood pressure. I was fat, but I didn't have high blood pressure. I didn't have bad cholesterol. I would get that stuff checked. I was a sports official and could still run very. People would make comments like, oh, you're you're pretty mobile for a fat guy. Right, thanks. I didn't feel bad. So I always chucked it up like, well, I'm fat, but I'm healthy, right? I don't have high blood pressure. And now I look at like, oh my gosh, like how bad was I? When, I, when, I, when some of the pain started going away, I didn't even realize I had some of the issues. I didn't realize that my, I probably needed a CPAP machine. Yeah. I snored, I would toss and turn, I would wake up in the middle of the night like gasping for breath, but I still thought I was healthy. So I definitely know what you feel. And it can be the same on the other people's side too. You know, people talk about like, well, I'm skinny. There is such a thing as skinny fat where right. you can look skinny on the outside, but you have lots of fat around your organs and things like that. And that's why eating this lifestyle is so important because we can kind of eliminate some of that stuff. Well, it's it's not a coincidence that we're both named Rachel because I really share that experience. And I, you know, you think you've got youth on your side and you can just kind of power through and you're strong and, and you're going at it. And it really isn't until something snaps in your life, whether it is, you know, for me, I was having stroke symptoms. Right. It wasn't my, it wasn't my knee. It was that I, I literally went blind while I was in the middle of driving my car home from work and had to pull over. My blood pressure was just absolutely through the roof. And my doctor was like, you're about to have a stroke. And I was like, I am too young for this. And I, but I had been leveraging my youth to not deal with getting healthy. I thought, well, getting healthy is what you do after you retire. Right. And that's just not true. Right. And also I think, you know, I was the same thing, Rachel, with like more than 15 years of being morbidly obese. So honestly, I didn't even know that I didn't felt good. What, what I thought was like my everyday being strong self, I, I just dealt with a lot of pain and I thought, well, that's just life. Right. Now, you know, I'm I'm older and I don't have to live with that daily pain. And when I do feel a pain, it's unusual instead of being commonplace. But yeah. I'm really proud of you. Like you can do this, girl. Okay, next one is from Dana. Hey, Dana. Dana said, so proud of my husband and never thought four years ago when he was 100 pounds heavier and suffering from Graves' disease that he would complete one of his many dreams of completing a half Iron Man race. Wow. It's so cool. You're gonna have to go to our Facebook group to take a look at it, but she had so a little awesome. video, but there's no way that I could easily get that video into here. Amazing. But it was so cool to watch him crossing that finish line. Congratulations. Fantastic. And also like Graves disease is really helped by keto. That's something that we don't, you know, hear all the time. We have somebody in our life that, you know, when, when they were diagnosed with it, we just prepared all their meals and brought it over and like just kind of helped them you know, get through that season of their life because yeah, it's right. it really speaks to that. Now remember, we are not doctors or nurses no. or health professionals or anything like that. So anything that we do talk about when it comes to medical things like Graves disease or blood pressure or anything like that is all from experiences we've had on our own personal life or from things we've read and learned from true professionals like Dr. Barry and others. Okay, next one is from June. Hey June, she says, I'm kind of confused on today's Keto Child Crate video. They said the winner of the giveaway will be announced on the community channel. Which channel is that? I am so glad you asked this because a lot of people don't understand this. First of all, the best way to see when we make a post on the community channel is to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so that you're notified when we upload a new video. What does that do? When you're subscribed, you have a feed. If you go on the bottom of your, like where you're on a computer, or if you're on your iPad or your phone or whatever, down the bottom of the app, you hit subscriptions and then you will only see videos from people you're subscribed to. Right. And you have a feed like in Facebook and any community post will show up in there. It's usually just a picture or a post. It doesn't have an actual video. If you hit the bell button, you actually get an alert on your phone that we've made a post to the community feed. To find the community page, you're going to go to youtube.com slash two crazy ketos and you're gonna come up with this. You're gonna get this page. This is our home page for YouTube and you're gonna see where I have circled their community. 
You simply press on that tab and it's gonna give you all of our posts that we put in the community page. Now, a lot of times those posts, you're gonna see, I don't go back and delete old things. So 99% of them are old things because it's kind of like where we make announcements. Like, right. hey, here's the winner. Rachel's hey, there's a sale here. <laughs> Rachel is sick and we can't make a live stream this week. Hopefully that's never going to happen again. Never again. But that is the best way to get to the community channel. YouTube.com slash two crazy ketos. Now we do have one more and uh, this one is from Vanessa. Hey Vanessa. Vanessa said in June of 2020, I had a quarterly appointment with my endocrinologist and my A1C had increased and it was time to increase my U500 insulin again. At that time, I asked if she would give me three months to lower my A1C before increasing my insulin. She said, okay, and I left her office. I went home and I spoke with my husband, Richard, and told him I wanna change our lifestyle and try a keto lifestyle. So good. He agreed. Today he has lost 76 pounds wow. and I have lost 41. We have more energy than we've ever had and we are busier than we've ever been and our health is much better. I am currently on no insulin so at all. Good. I've reduced my GERD medicine by half and I've decreased my blood pressure medication. My endocrinologist, my cardiologist, and my retina specialist all tell me to keep doing what you're doing because it's working great for you. Below is a video of my husband golfing this week, which I was not able to get in here. Uh, and he has not golfed in 10 years. I feel blessed that we have tried this lifestyle and I feel blessed that it's working for me. And then you get doctors who say, don't do this. I mean, I'm so glad that you, number one, had a doctor that said, I will give you three months because a lot of doctors aren't willing to do that. There's very few doctors yeah. out there who are gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna give you three months. And I, I understand why, they're worried about getting sued. But then the fact that you've come back and they're not giving you a lecture about other things, and they're like, what? they're looking at your labs and they're looking at you being like, yes, just keep doing this. Like you were really bad before and now you're not. And and I'm so happy for you and your husband. I'm very happy for, for you. That really speaks to me. My dad's name was Richard. And I really wish that we had found keto ahead of time and that I could have gone over there and said, let's try keto, let's all do keto together. We thankfully were able to do that with my mom, but we were too late or my dad, and he had a, a heartache, a heart attack and passed away. I'm so glad for your Richard. I'm celebrating with you that he's back on the golf course and enjoying his life. And our prayer is that he will continue to enjoy a long, long life and, and you two together, just enjoying good health. That makes our hearts so happy. Yeah. Well, that is gonna be this week's Keto on the Couch, and we greatly appreciate all of you for joining us for Keto on the Couch, whether you're doing it later in the week or you did it during the premiere. Now, if you are new to our channel, don't forget, Keto on the Couch premieres every Monday at 10 a.m., barring any kind of technical difficulties. Yeah, we try. Um, <laughs> and what is a premiere? A premiere is kind of like a cross between a live stream and a recorded video. So the video is pre-recorded, which is what we are doing right now on Saturday, but it goes up and we are in a live chat yes. so we can talk with you, we can answer your questions, <laughs> things that come up, and it allows you to get your question answered right away instead of in the comments later on. We do try to answer or at least read Every, every single comments. comment but sometimes <clears throat> it takes us a little while like right now i think we're two days behind on doing comments because Sorry. it's been really busy so if you can join us for the premiere at 10 a.m we're also trying to premiere some other videos as well throughout the week especially our vlogs let us know down in the comment section if you like that now if you like seeing videos like this check out some of the other videos that we have linked right over there also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you go this way or you go this way, don't forget to go this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.